That's a pretty effective splooge. I'd say you made six to ten dwarfs with that. Nice work. I mean, dwarf in the mythical sense, you fucking whack jobs. Iron Forge. World of Warcraft. Work with me here. The Angry Llama is made for adults who enjoy honest crass cutting reviews when we're talking fucking llama. Sensitive bipeds need not apply. Hello and welcome to the Angry Llama. I just wanted to say thanks to Neil, uh, Mr. Ham and Cheese. He bought me a beer. Thanks a lot, man. That's wicked cool that you supported the channel. I appreciate it. It feels good to know people are getting something out of it. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, on to the show. Hello, this is Angry Llama. Today on the farm, we've got beautiful sunshine and a chance of some alpacas. <laughs> That's right, the farm is teeming with life. Let's take a look at what we have. Oh, I see it out in the distance now in my safari van. It is a PS4 console player. Okay, Fonsoman 90. I got you, Fonsoman. Fonsoman? Fonso Man. All right, Fonso. I am a PS4 console player, and I've been playing since launch. I've been silver gold the entire time. Always mixing up roles and heroes, but I'm finally feeling comfortable on Farah. Torb is my main. My buddies in this game are Zap Brannigan and Ben Tenmero, the at and and someone named Titty Tunes or something. Okay, well let's get into it. Uh, what do you think is preventing you from climbing? Well, Fonsum ninety says he is about uh, just he's just crested into silver, so he's at fifteen fifty nine, and he says execution on the plans I have. I take the time to get a good spot, then I get impatient and drop off my good spot to a bad spot. And when I find myself in bad positions, then I turn them into bad flags. <laughs> also, I tend to just overshoot with no set target in mind. <laughs> How hard do you want to be roasted? Like a Hawaiian luau pig. Okay, let's get to it. Let's baste them up, hit the fire, let's start it up because the charcoals are ready this time, sir. So we're heating them up for you. Let's go, Fonsome man. Let's do it. Okay, we're in Ilios. We're on with Foso Man 90. Let's go. Okay. You're just cresting silver, fine. But real quick, you can put um, a whole bunch of rockets out. Um, you even see him do it in bronze. You kick out of here, you uh, levitate up, and then you just send rockets. Look at, um, you can watch this. So you'll end up being about here-ish. No, you'll be higher. Hold on. Maybe here. And you send, it might be even higher. And then you send your rockets. Look, they go up over this thing, up over this thing, up over this thing, and they hit all these people. Um, just something to learn on Farah. It's like little things like that. Like you can build your uh, ultimate faster and that could be the difference maker but no big deal let's see what you're doing we're gonna come up with a few things you can work on but that's always a fun little tip i feel so here we are with our team now oh this is interesting and in silver you might not notice this but um can your pharah be easily healed by either of your supports answer that question can your pharah be easily healed by any of your supports you have a lucio who does area of effect healing, so that's a no. And then we do a Moira, who has a directly kind of in front of her spritz healing for the group. Okay, so we're, we probably won't get a ton of support. Um, we are facing up against a Diva Zen soldier combo against our Pharah. Let's see how it goes. This is cool. You're taking an angle. I like this. You're using your jets. That's fine. You're looking for the boop. Is that what it is? Oh. Oh. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So, so that was really unfortunate. I think what happened there is you didn't like, like in your description, you kind of said this too in your own way is you're like, I kind of don't know what my job should be. L let's quickly talk about it. Um, I think you had a lot of opportunity to, to do your job here, um, and it didn't happen. So you first came up here, and instead of doing spam damage, you went for the boop. That's okay, but let's, let's look at what was going on when you tried for that boop. I want to show you that it wasn't the best time for it, um, and, and just a moment later was a great time. So uh, again, sometimes what I like to say is like, 
plat to diamond into masters the difference between um the guys in plat and under and up to diamond and masters is you're really looking at patience so understanding when to be patient but watch this so first here, we walked the whole way here. Now we're using our jump jet fuel for no reason. Now we're out of fuel. And right now, I think you're going to do your boop instead of just putting damage in. Um, and I don't see anybody that we can really boop. Because remember, let's talk about boop physics just real quick. Um, when you boop, it's going to hit let's say you really want to hit the ground or something, but you end up hitting one of the characters. It doesn't matter. But even if you hit your boop here, which was the best outcome, it's booping those guys back and it may boop him that way, but it's certainly not a boop into the well. So you came over here going, okay, I don't want to give away my position. I'm not going to put in a ton of rockets. I'm going to wait for a really good boop. I was okay with that. That was some patience, but let's look at the boop you do. And then we'll see the boop that you miss just moments later because it's not up, right? That's the boop you do. Just not a good boop, right? We really want the enemy team to be um, at least on the grass, man. Like, you can't boop them from there. That's just booping them back. So, watch this. You use your boop up. Now you're exposed. You rock it yourself for whatever reason. Now watch a boop that becomes available. It's fucking glorious. It's like four-man boop. Right? Right there. The only thing... I mean, it's not a four-man boop like I want it to be. But the only place you have to boop to make this happen... Just aim at the wall. You can go here. You can bounce off of this. Bounce off of that. Use the floor... Um, just don't try to direct rocket them and one, two, three of these guys boop in. Hell, you could probably boop Diva in, but she's not a great target. And neither is Moira. But you could boop the Sigin from there, maybe. Uh, but what what a better boop opportunity. And we kind of gave it up because our boop is on what? Like an eight second cooldown, right? So it's a pretty big cooldown. Um, almost up. Oh, look at that right there. Oh, what a boop. Look at that. Look at all these boops. Oh, that's too bad, right? Then you leave. Your boop comes up and you leave. The only reason for you to be there was the boop. So right now I feel I'm going to watch a bunch and just see how scatterbrain your um, kind of missions are. Like you said, you kind of lose track of your missions. So right now your mission seems weird. You did shoot a rocket at your own Lucio. Just Now you can boop up against that wall. Boop. Just boop up against that wall and they all go in. Boop. Why do you hate me? Boop. What? Mm. You're silver, so I'm letting a bunch slide, but you're killing me, man. You're killing me, Smalls. Your Pharah is so much worse than silver. Like, I need to see your Torb. Because this Farah is just, like, you're doing, like, you're giving long-range damage when you should just go dive that soldier and fucking kill him. Um, you have people set up for boops, and then you don't do it, and then you dive for just a boop that you hit on the Doom's face. Like, everything about the way you're playing this is so weird. You keep... Dude... You know what I'm forgetting? It's console. A lot harder to aim on console. But that's okay. Um, but the methodology should still be the same. So, like, you are the counter to Doom on your team. I don't know if you know that. Zap Brannigan is an absolute easy target for Doom. Um, the Lucio is not a bad target. He can uh, boop him away and stuff. But, um, like, you need to be taking care of that Doomfist. He's a problem. Like, you haven't died, but you've been so not effective. Oh, <laughs> what a direct! No, just get out of there. You're so low, dude. Now, remember, you can be seen. You can be seen. You can be seen. Wait for it to wear off! Don't go up that way. You could have just flown around. 
It's weird, like... I'm just trying to watch it. You didn't even want to try for a boop first? Oh my god, thank you. Boost. This is not the fight to take at half health. She'll win. If she's not horrible. Oh my god, what's this? You don't even like, like, I think you've used your boop twice. The whole fight. I mean, the whole match. That's insane. You don't only use it to boop people off. Uh, I saw you use it twice for mobility, which was cool. That's great. I, I didn't think you had it in you the way you're playing this Farah. I wouldn't think you'd know that tech, but I was happy to see it. Cool. You, you know that you can get places quicker by uh, booping yourself backwards. Great. Uh, but you've yet to use it to displace an enemy. Um, you can absolutely displace a group of enemies and it fucks up everything they're trying to do. Imagine you're sitting there trying to do something and then right when you go to do it, you're booped in the air by this boop. Boop. It's very helpful. You can lead them. You can put them places when they're hiding. I want to keep watching. Right now, I don't love the amount of impact you're having. But on the same kick, like... You're keeping up with um, alt charge of your teammates, so you're not holding them back. I'm just worried, like, how inefficient or ineffective your positioning was and how little we really got done. I'm not going to really comment too much on the sim. I think we're switching to a tour. I will say solo flanks on sim is probably not the plan. Only one of three of your sentry turrets are up. That's like job one in low levels. Put them up. Causes havoc. Why would you back into their team? That's literally insane. Like, like you weren't like, oh, I'm a frontline maniac. You're like, I'm such a frontlining maniac. I'm going into their backline on Symmetra. I don't mind that if you're fat beaming and you're killing everybody. You just kind of walked away from them all. Hilarious. I guess. Okay. Fonzo, man. Not a huge fan of your Farah. I better see better Torb work. And I'll tell you what. I've seen a lot of Torb in my day. Let's see what you got. Show me the Torb. Alright. We're back on board with Fonzo, man. He knows to do his mobility move, which is his overload, or whatever the fuck that's called. Helps you move really fast. It's a good thing to get out of spawn with. Good for you. Let's see where he puts his turret. Will it be obvious? Yes, he has decided obvious is the way to go. Even though they have a soldier and will easily kill this. So, what I like to tell a lot of Torbjorns is don't use your turret as a tank. Use your turret as a flank. So, hear me out. Here's why. If you put your turret down as a tank, it is a tank with no shield, it will die, it gets shot easily, everybody knows to focus it. If you put your turret where it's, say, in a place where it's not getting any damage done when the initial push happens, but the moment the over-aggressors push or a flank pushes in, that turret does the work. So instead of like getting a little bit of damage up front, um, well, let's say let's say a good amount of damage up front and having your target killed Why not get a little less damage have it on a flank and have them actually secure kills be impactful? I once um, Forgot what fucking level it was. I mean it was some low metal rank But I was once in an argument that the dude told me my torb sucked because I wouldn't put the uh, turret on main hallway in Anubis hilarious hilarious. Okay, so Let's see what you do.
it's especially strong on console because of like how hard it is. No, he'll just kill it. Look, it's dead. Dude, throwing your fresh baby turret at anyone is a horrible idea. Throw it on the other side of the wall, give baby turret a bit, a bit of time to build up, then it's a problem even though you put it wide out in the open. But to throw a baby turret at a soldier is ridiculous. He's just gonna like kill it, like instantly. That's silly. I want to see where you put this turret. Sometimes you guys like me to get examples, but I just want to see what he's going to do here. He's going to put it back up there, huh? Hmm. Like, they have a soldier. They have an Orissa. They have an Anna. They have a Lucio. That thing is not going to live up there, bro. Yeah, they'll never see that coming. Jesus, man. Oh, your aim, man, is a little, a little gamey. Like, like you're shooting to the right side of that Arisa over and over again, and it feels like you're not moving your thumbstick because if you do, it will go out of uh, position. The way you do that is don't use your right thumbstick to make fine-tuned movements. Use your left thumbstick. What does that mean, Llama? That means, like, if you do lateral movements like this, Instead of trying to move your right thumbstick, but instead, as you're shooting, you make little lateral changes, that's going to help fine-tune your movement without your thing getting all wacky if that's how your stick is, because I know the default settings are pretty fucking weird. So, you can just laterally move, left and right, I mean, left and right, just little adjustments and really fine-tune that aim as you're fighting. Very important, especially on console. Oh, I gotta hide the chat. Hide the chat. Let's get back into it. Oh! Yeah, dude, you gotta hit more shots. No, just run away, man. It's fine. Let's get back in and see what's going on here. Let's see if we can't help this boy out. So... We're keeping up, seems, with our friends and family here on Ultimate Charge. Looks like we're ahead of most of them. Our Daikau sucks, and I don't know. Well, his percent's real low, at least. You guys are hiding in this little hole. Okay. They switched off. Oh my god, with this... Yeah, you gotta stop doing that shit, man. Your turret is not a tank. Your turret is more of a flank. That wasn't bad. That's a pretty effective splooge. I'd say you made six to ten dwarfs with that. Nice work. I mean dwarf in the mythical sense, you fucking whack jobs. Iron Forge. World of Warcraft. Work with me here. <laughs> That's kind of a funny shot. Dude was like, oh, I got this kill. Oh my god, where are you going to put the start? Where are you going to put it? 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 I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Oh my god, you're going back up. Fonso, man. You know what, dude? You're a tour main, right? I'm going to post at least two to three links below of just Torb turret spots. They make a world of difference. Like, it seems silly to learn or practice them. But honestly, they make all the difference in the world. Because... Uh, just like Sun Tzu said, right, the general of renown from thousands of years ago wrote the art of war that people still read today, is like deception's the number one key to winning war. What does that mean? It means instead of putting a turret where they expect it, you put it in an unexpected spot. It wins one fight. That's all you need. Then you move the turret. You win the next fight because it's unexpected. I swear to God, I get out of the metal ranks on Torb by simply moving turrets every fight. It's hilarious. You don't need comms. You don't need game sense. You just got to move the fucking turret every fight and people can't deal with it. It's hilarious. Okay, I hope that gives you some stuff to work on, my man Farah. I say uh, Far Farah is strong now, though. But if you're not getting a Mercy Pocket, just avoid the Farah and hop on the Torb. I like your Torb more. Just practice on your fine-tuned aiming with the console, right? So that lateral movement. And I want you working on turret placement. 
And also, um, when you are working on your Farah, I want you to work more on what is my goal right now, um, because that did not look apparent. Okay. Llama out. Hey, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the last couple days, the editing has been a little different, right? Yeah, that's Golgar. Golgar is now doing the editing of the show, and that's why it's better. It's not because I found more time or I started doing it. No, no, no. It's because Golgar, yeah, the guy that runs Foul, the, you know, he does all of that crazy stuff. Yeah, well, it's Foul's down season, so now he's, like, doing editing for the farm. Yeah, pretty fucking awesome. You want to support Golgar? Go watch the ads on his videos. Let's go do this. Thank you, Golgar. You are the man. The myth. The legend. Okay, Llama out. The angry Llama is not just some pissed off Overwatch coach. Well, it is. But it's also a 500 biped strong community of caring and informed Overwatch players. It is also more active than your aunt spreading misinformation on the Facebook. Good people really do gravitate towards Llama love and the sweet smell of victory. My long neck probably brings the alpacas to the yard though. No, but wait, oh, where was it? Right, the community. We are doing new stuff at the community. Yes, today I am happy to announce farm teams. Do you want to play without toxic trolls in your game? Do you have a fun idea for a team name? Do you want to talk about quilting and maybe the latest Seinfeld episode that came out 25 years ago? Then you are joining them. Lama just hired a farm athletics commissioner, and she and her team will be reaching out to all farm members, all 500 and I don't know, 50 of them or so, to see if they want to be on a team. What kind of team? We have quick play, we have competitive, we have all sorts of arcade Lucio balls, and then we'll look at your availability. And with the magic of spreadsheets, we will then find some times and fun for everyone. If you got two hours, we will find you some fun. Come to the farm and ask about farm teams starting the second week in October.